Hi, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. Yesterday I had brought up that um, love is stronger than hate and that um, the one thing that we can ask and the one thing we seek is to dwell in the presence of God all the days of our lives. And I was reminiscing uh, uh, in my um, closet. I'd found a pile of my journals. I, I've got a ouch, so you'll see that. Um, I was reading through some of my past journals and realizing some of the past pain that I had had and how that was being projected onto those around me that I loved the most. And that we can only come into love being greater than hate when we know that we're loved. And when Jesus becomes the first love of our lives and we can receive his love, it is that love and that forgiveness and that grace that we receive that we know that we know that we know that his grace, his love, his mercy overflows out of us onto those around us. And that's when love becomes greater than hate. When we realize our own sinful nature and how desperately we need the forgiveness of God and how desperately we need his love so that as we receive it, it overflows from us and is freely given to those around us. And so um, that is something that's desperately needed in this time of such division. But today, I, God brought me to a whole nother playing level in this. So I was thanking him for our family night last night because my boys come over, our boys come over on Monday nights because Mondays are like work week nights and everybody's back to the grind for a week and, and we just offer a dinner for our boys and their significant others and um and it's a wonderful time to celebrate a monday instead of it feeling so drudgery as i was um thanking him the lord had given us this moment in our music room where all the boys and their dollies were there and we were uh sitting down and starting to talk and I had mentioned to the boys that I had been digging through my old journals and mentioned to them with their their girlfriends around and and I just said I came across um, one that I was reading where in my brokenness in my inability to receive God's love my pain of my past would come out onto those that I love the most my spouse and my children and um, as I sat in that closet and realizing that uh, I could do nothing to change my past, not a thing, I wish I was saying to the boys, I wish that I knew then what I know now and how to care for their um, sense of being and belonging and their attachment style and hope wishing they could have had a secure attachment and that I would have looked at them with love every time I looked into their eyes and yet that wasn't the case and I felt so filled with sorrow um, that I wept in that closet reading through my journals and then I remembered who my God was and I started to war and my weapon is my worship I started to praise God because he's the God that restores all the years that the locusts have eaten. He is the healer. And um, I started to pray and I started to worship and I, and I, want, I picked up the double-edged sword with Jesus and started to sever the generational sin that the boy's father and I had handed down to them. You know, the sins of anger or rage or self-centeredness or impatience or yelling or criticalness or harsh words or neglect or addictions or fear, anxieties, whatever it was that we hand down if we don't sever it. And the Lord reminded me, your weapon is your worship. 
So I started to worship God. And I asked him to replace these things, um, those sins, those generational sins with the fruits of the spirit and wisdom and humility and gentleness, boldness, a warrior spirit, kindness, truth, God's mindset, his spoken word, his actions, his patience, his peace, his presence, his security, his love, his joy. And I warred for my boys in that closet. As I was sharing this with my boys and their dollies in the music room, I apologized and said that I wished I would have known then what I know now. I would have done things so differently. I would have taken the time they needed. I would have engaged more in their life with them than them me being so busy with my own agenda. And um, my husband piped in and said that he wished he could do the same with his kids. And it was really a somber moment and most of us were welling up with tears. But we had this opportunity to express to our children a, a regret that we had in the things that we wish we could have done differently had we only known the love of God to give it away and how important it is to have that first love relationship so that everything else falls in line with that. But I was thanking the Lord for that interaction with the kids that day, that night, last night. And um, we got a text message from our youngest girlfriend thanking Dan for expressing his heart and how it spoke to her that we would speak this way to our children and allow um, them to hear our apology and our repentance. And, um, and it was really a beautiful moment. It was really a beautiful moment and we were in tears just reading her text. But we, um, and in that heart, um, I came in today's scriptures and I'm reading out of Our Daily Bread. Amy Peterson is the author of this particular devotion today called Golden Scars. And how appropriately it fits to all that was going on. So I'm going to be reading to you in 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. I'm just going to start. I must go, I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. He heard inexpressible things, things that man can, is not permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain so. No one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. To keep me from becoming conceited, because of these sur surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I remember pleading with God, help me to be a good mother, help me to be a good wife and um, take away my pain, take it away I, I function and help me to be gentle and kind and patient and, and a lot of that. And every time I was weak, the Lord was coming through with more and more for me. I can remember um, this this saying, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. 
If we were capable of doing everything on our own, I know for sure we wouldn't need and we wouldn't seek God. And it's in our weaknesses that he starts to show us his divine and incredible power. And, um, and even in our repentance of our weaknesses, there's beauty that comes through like beyond my comprehension with the tear-filled eyes of my kids or their grace in saying, Mom, it's okay. And, um, and their girlfriends um, being so impacted by our vulnerability and our hearts for things to be uh, holy and healed. And that brings me in the devotion that Amy wrote called Golden Scars. Ooh, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weaknesses. And she writes, in the Netherlands, a group of fashion designers offer a golden joinery workshop. Inspired by the Japanese technique where broken porcelain is visibly repaired with gold, participants collaborate in mending clothes in ways that highlight the mending work rather than trying to mask it. Those who, those who are invited bring a dear but broken garment and mend it with gold. As they remake their clothes, the repair becomes ornamental, a golden scar. Articles of clothing are transformed in ways that highlight the places where they were torn or frayed. Perhaps this is something like what Paul meant when he said that he would boast in the things that showed his weaknesses. Although he experienced some surpassingly great revelations, he doesn't brag about them. He is kept from getting proud and overconfident, he says, by a thorn in his flesh. No one knows exactly what he was referring to, perhaps depression or a form of malaria, persecution from enemies or something else. Whatever it was, he begged God to take it away. Have you ever begged God to take something away because it was such a struggle? His grace is sufficient. Because in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. But God says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Just as the rips and tears and clothes can become sights of beauty as they're remade by designers, the broken and weak places in our lives can become places where God's power and glory may shine. He holds us together transforms us and makes our weaknesses beautiful. What are some weaknesses you try to keep hidden from the world? How has God revealed his power through your weakness? The prayer is this, God, may all my scars become golden as you heal and repair me in ways that bring glory to your name. As I sat in that closet, it was double fold, though I wept over what was lost because of my weaknesses. I've also realized that I've come a very long way and how much healing God has put in my life since I wrote that journal so many years ago. It brings us to Jesus Calling, Sarah Young's book. You can download her app. You can order her book online. She writes from the perspective of God speaking to us. Today says... I am your living God, far more abundantly alive than the most vivacious person you know. <laughs> the human body is wonderfully crafted, but gravity and the inevitable effects of aging weigh it down. Even the most superb athlete cannot maintain his fitness over many decades. Lasting abundant life can be found in me alone. Do not be anxious about the weakness of your body. Instead, view it as a prelude to my infusing energy, my infusing energy into your being. As you identify more and more fully with me, my life becomes increasingly intertwined with yours. Though the process of aging continues, inwardly you grow stronger with the passing years. Those who live close to me develop an inner aliveness that makes them seem youthful in spite of their years. Let my life shine through you as you walk in the light with me. 
and in your weaknesses. Let his strength shine brightly and wear those garments because that just shows how powerful he's been in your life as he's healed you. And that's today's piece of peace. God's blessing.